What's that? I don't know, Ma. Did you hear that? Hear what? A frog croak. Did that bell ring? Oh, I'll wager that boy brought that creature along the church. Warm his hags, bro. Yeah, Nucky. Like the pastor, you're gonna have a pretty fair turnout. Oh, I reckon they're here as much for the show as salvation. Him being new and all. You oughtn't to be. You look just fine. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Corinthians 13, 2. Let the heathens be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Joel 3, 12. Heathens? Polly, they prayed with axes in their hands and a packet of seed. Like the noble savage. We'll be just like them in time. Are you sorry we left Bethlehem? Andrew, no. Oh, look at your hands. You've been in the fields again. Would you like me to be crocheting samplers? Yesterday the corn was more than an inch high. You promised me you wouldn't. Andrew, I am not some Connecticut belle that you treat like a child. I knew we'd have to do our own planting and hoeing if we expected to eat. Besides, the child isn't due until autumn. And by then, we'll have a full harvest. They're waiting. You'd better get. You sound more cane tuck every day. And not too softly, Andrew. As sounding brass. Good morning. For my text today, I thought it fitting to quote from Genesis. He's scared. Hush, is real. Then Isaac's... Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. For blessed are those who till the soil and reap their own harvests. Who but the founder of husbandry could think this way? In the dawn of creation, man was a nomad wandering the earth in search of a plot of land he could call his own. The Israelites who settled in Canaan can be likened to the wanderers who braved the perils of the Cumberland Pass to settle in Boonesboro, our Canaan. As today, their villages became walled towns in which farm families lived during the winter. Boundary stones were respected and men lived in peace side by side. The cultivating of land was highly regarded among the Hebrews. Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the field after his kind. And it was so. Who belongs to this creeping thing? Me, sir. Israel Boone? Yes, sir. What do you call it? Just frog, sir. May I suggest Genesis? <laughs> Now, Israel, will you promise to bring him every Sunday? Yes, sir. Good. When I became a man, I put away childish things. But who among us knows when that time has come?
on the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The rippinest, floridest, fightinest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man, is a big man, and he fought for America to make all Americans free. What a boom, what a doer, what a dream come a doer was he. to look after. You think that boy wouldn't have to tote a frog to church. Well, I don't think anybody got too riled up over that, Becky. Well, how do you imagine I felt when that creature almost landed in Sarah Kimball's bonnet? Might have improved the looks of it at that. Daniel Boone, if you aren't aiming to give that boy a tannin... You will. Well, the pastor must think we're raising a little savage. Well, it seems to me that Andrew Cooper should be mighty grateful to Israel. Grateful? Well, sure, it's not every Sunday a green preacher gets to practice a christening on a frog. Daniel? Pa! Ah! There's something inside! I heard it! rich for her blood. Her coat was getting kind of dull, Ma. Is that all you have to say about that young man? Well, for a minute there, I thought we were being raided by the Shawnees. Kind of nice to know it was only Rosebud. Did you hear what he said, Dan? I reckon we're lucky at that. Did you talk to him? And we talked. How'd he take it? Becky. Dan, you didn't tell him he had to get rid of Rosebud, did you? Well, a boy has to have something to look after. That fawn ruined our Sunday supper, turned our home into a shambles. And do you call that looking after it? Well, no, but I couldn't put all the blame on Israel. Well, who's to blame? Maybe I haven't spent all the time I could have with him lately. Dan, you're only blaming yourself to keep the boy from hurting. I have to admit, it was a small, furry thing when he found it. A play toy he could hug and run with. But the fawn is not that now, Dan. It's wild and mischievous and... Like him. He's growing too, Becky. He's straining to break free. He's a child. The biggest piece of him is yet. There's an awful lot of him itching for manhood. When's he gonna learn he can't keep all that wildness tamed forever? I don't know. But that's something he's gonna have to learn all by himself. You're tired. After only eight rows, you must think I'm made of taffy. Eleven. That many? Well, we'll have the whole field planted by nightfall. Oh, no, we won't. You sit and rest. On this lovely furrow. And after tucking each precious kernel of corn in with my own bare hands. Come on now. I never dreamed it could be this bountiful. The earth, people in Boonesboro, and you. You keep on like that, Reverend, and you're going to be bursting with humility. Mm. 
pride goeth before a fall. You look stern enough, but inside you're grinning from ear to ear. Ear corn to ear corn, Polly. <laughs> oh, if I didn't try them out on you, how could I spare my congregation? They liked you yesterday. You think so? The Bishop of Boston couldn't have handled it with more authority. <laughs> I was rescued by a boy and a frog. It provided a stirring parable. And here's one for you, my good wife. Go home and rest. Looks like Israel's fawn. It's gone. It's all gone. Can't you see I'm busy, Rosebud? You keep feeding her and we never will get this fence finished. How high up do you think we have to go, Pa? A lot higher than we have here. Just don't seem right, keeping a tame fawn cooped up like that. You know we have to do it, don't you? I suppose so. That's what you get for breaking in uninvited. Morning, Mr. Boone. Israel. Morning. Morning, Reverend. Why, it seems a powerful hot day to be splitting rails, Mr. Boone. Pa and me are building us a pen to keep Rosebud in. She's kind of my little brother. I can see she's fond of you. I expect that's true, sir. Seeing I give her about as much loving as she can stand. Well, I'm sure glad you came by, Reverend. Gives me an excuse to stop work for a while. Can I tempt you with a swallow or something cool? Oh, uh, no, Mr. Boone. Thank you. Well, you didn't come all the way across that clearing to tell me I was backsliding, did you? <sighs> Do I wear my adversity that meanly, Mr. Boone? It looks like a stout pen. Uh, how is Genesis? Genesis? Oh, you mean my frog, crowing by leaps and bounds, sir. <laughs> uh, a witty lad, Mr. Boone. Well, uh, good day to you both. Come on, Reverend. I like him, Pa. I like him too, Israel. Why do you suppose he came by? Oh, he strikes me as a man with something on his mind. Not quite ready to let go of it. A minister with troubles? He ain't supposed to have any, is he, Pa? Well, not small ones, anyway. Good night, darling. Good night, Ma. You wouldn't change your mind about Rosebud bedding down with me, would you? Now, we've been all through that, Israel. It would only be the last night. Pommy almost got the rails high enough. Now, you saw what she did to the house. That's because she was lonesome. She wouldn't be with me. The way you treat her, I don't think she even knows she's a deer. She's going to be real scared out there by herself. She'll be all right. I know it. Come under the covers with you. Good night, my angel. Good night, Mom. Sweet dreams.
Take it easy. You gotta hold still, Rosebud. If I'm gonna get you loose, ain't no reason to be this scared of the dark. Now hold still, will ya? You're gonna wake Ma for sure. We did, boy. Israel, what you did took a lot of courage. I didn't think too much about it, Pa. She was scared of the painter and she needed protection. We didn't mean to wake you, Ma. You're safe now, Rosebud. We will always be together. It seems to me that you'd at least have time to eat your breakfast. You did promise to get me up at daybreak. With the little sleep you've had this past week? It had to be done. Redone, you mean, and all on account of that fool fawn. Oh, now, Polly, we're not sure of that. Andrew, we saw the tracks clearly. It could have been a wild deer. I suppose that's true, but you still could have told them. It seemed pointless. They were building a pen to keep the animal from running free. If it was the boy's fawn, she won't molest us again. I'll be coming out to help. You've got enough to do here. It won't harm me when the sun wanes a little. But there's no need to. It's half done with. Why, with some luck, I'll have 20 more rows planted by nightfall. I'll still be coming. With a payo full of parched rye and chestnuts you call coffee. Why, if some of that spilled, it'll wilt our crops. And I was thinking of baking my husband a pumpkin pie. <laughs> We've needed it long before this. I can't. Then I will. I don't even know how to use it. Then learn. Andrew, we have the right to protect what's ours. By killing? It's better than facing a winter of starvation. I would rather die than destroy a living creature. This is the wilderness, my husband, not Boston. Is one allowed to adjust one's principles in accordance with geography? If it means our survival, yes. I can't live that way. Then tell Boone. To destroy the deer for me. And with it a boy's heart. Where are you going? I'm carrying a child, Andrew. Our child. Perhaps you can find it in yourself to forgive me for thinking that it cannot feed on piety. The 
Looks like we got company, Ma. Company? Oh, oh it's a pastor's wife. Oh, and look at me, Dan. Well, Rebecca, she's seen soap being made before. Good morning, Miss Spoon. Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. We're right proud to have you visit us. I hope you're not sensitive to the smell of lye. Israel, go fetch some water. Yes, ma'am. No, no, I, I won't stay. And it's likely you won't want me after you hear what I have to say. Well, what is it, Miss Cooper? It's about your deer. You mean Rosebud? Yes. I'm afraid the animal has been eating our corn. She wouldn't do nothing like that. It's so, boy. And it's not the first time. But she's been in that pen. Now, hold on a minute, Israel. Is that what your husband came over the other day to talk about? He meant to, but he couldn't, knowing it was the boy's pet. Well, how can you be sure it was Israel's fawn? It couldn't have been, Pa. It just couldn't have been. Hush, Israel. I truly wish it weren't. The tracks were clear, and they led to this cabin. When was this? This morning. Miss Cooper, we built that pen hoping to keep her in. It seems impossible that she could jump it, but what other explanation could there be? Rosebud couldn't clear that rail. That's why we built it, didn't we, Pa? She could surprise us, son. Israel, didn't you have Rosebud out of her pen this morning? Yes, ma'am, but she was with me every minute. The boy could be mistaken. He, he could have turned his back or, or forgotten. Did you, son? I never took my eyes off her, Pa. Honest. Israel wouldn't lie, Mrs. Cooper. If what you say is true, I suppose we'll have to kill the farm. I came here knowing that. You couldn't, Pa. You just couldn't. Israel, winter's coming on. These folks have got their lives staked on that crop. But we still ain't sure she did it, Pa. I suppose there's a way we could find out. If you were to call to Rosebud, she'd try pretty hard to come to you, wouldn't she? Yes, sir. But there ain't much chance of her doing that. Is there? Well, that's something we're going to have to prove to Mrs. Cooper. I guess so. Why don't you go over there by that tree and call to her? Go on, son. Call her. Rosebud! She's going to want to hear you. Rosebud! Don't do it, Rosebud. Don't do it. Why'd you come, Rosebud? Why'd you come? I'm sorry, Israel. If we just build the rails higher? Before we got it finished, she'd bust out and do it all over again. There never was any use, son. We'd just been fooling ourselves, thinking we could keep her a fawn forever. What do you aim to do, Pa? Well, there's nothing you can do that would comfort you. So I reckon I'll just take her out in the woods and... No! I'll get her lost. I'll take her so far out, she won't know how to get back. Now, you know she would. She's been tainted with petting, is not too wild to keep and too tame to lose. Seems like she just rode up overnight. Yeah, I know. I guess there's no more use talking about it. Yeah, it seems like we've just about talked it out. I couldn't do it, Pa. I just couldn't look at her and shoot her. I never intended for you to. Let me take one more walk with her, Pa. Just one. It won't make it any easier. It's just to say goodbye.
This is the church, Rose, but I guess we better do some praying. Or can you better stay out here until I'm finished? I ain't much of a hand at praying, Lord. And I ask for much in the way of blessings. Except to protect Ma and Pa and Mingo from the Shawnee. Oh, and what's a Christmas time for snow when it was late in coming? Another time to help keep the multiplication tables tucked inside my head. Yep, that was about it. But this time, God, I'm aiming for more than a blessing. I've got to have me a miracle. Something that comes with a bolt of lightning and a clap of thunder. It's for my friend Rosebud. Wait long for this world and this shoe come a running. Amen. I heard your prayer, Israel. I didn't mean for you to. Come on, Rose. I, I prayed too, Israel. I, I truly did. For her to get shot. I can understand your feelings. No, you can't. You don't belong here and you never will. I hate you. Come on, Rose, but... before I do. You know what we're going to do, Rosebud? We're going to run away. That's what. You and me together. We're going to travel so far, even God won't know who we are. Unless we tell him. And the way I feel... He's going to have to find out for himself. What will Ma say when she sees this? How is she going to scold us if we ain't coming back? And we ain't, are we, Rosebud? Hey, wait a minute. Am I following you or you following me? When you run away from home, you got to have a leader. And being you're only a deer, I'm going to be doing the leading. Now, come on. Come on. You as thirsty and as tired as me? once in a while. But just remember, I'm still in command. Oh, he said, the last run in the stream where the sun can get through is where plants grow. And that's a good feeding place for animals. We might catch us a raccoon or a beaver, maybe even a porcupine. But you gotta hide out and wait till they come, you understand? First, I better cut me a pointy hickory stick. Turnips are good eating. Thank 
bad, Rosebud. Not that it wouldn't go down, but there was some crusty cornbread or a chunk of bacon. be over soon, Rosebud. No use being scared over it. I know I was asking for a miracle, God, but you don't have to boast about it. You soaked through? Well, not too bad. Started up just after I left the Squires. Well, if Israel's putting Rosebud in her pen, I expect we could have her sleep in the house one more night. Isn't he here? I thought he was with you. Stay by the fire, I'll go. Evening, Pastor. Evening, Mrs. Boone. Daniel. You've come about Israel. Yes. Then he's with you. Well, no. I was hoping to find him here. I, I wanted to speak to him. Oh, Daniel. Now, Becky, suppose he did mean to run off. He couldn't have gone very far. I'm afraid this is all on my account. He came to me and I... I had no answer. He cried for help and I was dumb. Speechless. Well, you can't hold yourself to blame for that, Pastor. But I reckon I should start out to find him. I need some food and some muscle for bandages. He's hurt. Well, don't worry, Becky. He knows a lot about the woods and caring for himself. But the rain will wash away the tracks. It will also slow him down. I want to come, Daniel. I, I may not be much help, but I, I promise I won't hinder you none. Well, if it'll make you feel better, Pastor, you're welcome to come along. Thank you. Bring him home safe, Dan. Don't worry, Becky. Away, Rosebud, but you wouldn't do that, would you? Rosebud, wait! I guess she's just hungry. Me too. There's got to be some wild crab apples or gooseberries around. I wonder how Ma felt when she didn't find me in bed this morning. I bet she's sorry. He'll do a heap of good pining for me. Might learn I ain't to be fooled with. But, but they'd have missed me last night at supper. That means Pa's after us. We'd better get a move on. Come on! Come on, Rosebud. Why'd you let me sleep? Well, two hours is not much. You think he'd be trying to make his way to some settlement or some Indian camp? The closest settlement's Harrodsburg. It's too far. He'd stay clear of the Cherokee, knowing they'd bring him home. How about the Shawnee? No, it's not likely. Only if he bumped into a hunting party. And he'd know enough to stay out of their territory. And where will we look? I figure he'll stay close to water, then head for the high ground. He'll want to be able to see who's coming after him. Uh, have some? I'm not hungry. You best eat. It may take us all day to catch up. I 
can't. Whatever faith that child had was shattered by my silence. Or strengthened. You lost your corn. That's a wrong that can't be set right by a pat on the head or sugary words. There was something I could have done. You're doing it now. maybe we'd better get off here rosebud this here is the cumberland trail we're just liable to get us caught me how to do this once. It's really a wolf trap, but no reason why I couldn't snare a rabbit. And right now, I could eat one whole. Find something? Wild turnips. Looks like Israel had some supper. Top to the pole. No. Now I'll test it. to do now is wait and be still. Looks like this is where he got in out of the rain. Resourceful lad. What is it? Bobcat tracks. It's a big one too. Oh, 
bad luck. Rosebud, sure does feel like it. That rabbit. to feeding time at home, Ross, but oh, I can just see those dried apples and pumpkins looped across the room. The meat roasting on the spit. Can you smell it, Rosebud? And the bean porridge and the suet pudding and the baked apple dumpling. Right now, I'd go for milkweed or marsh marigold or anything that was welded in the root cellar. It'll be dark soon. I'm gonna rest just about another minute. Gather me up some moss to keep cover. Hear those frogs croaking? They sound sad, don't they? Look at what Genesis is doing. Oh, Genesis, if it wasn't for that old preacher, we wouldn't be out here alone. I don't care if they never find me. I'd sooner die than go back without you, Rosebud. We got us a painter, Pa, don't it? 
That's right, son. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now that he's gotten his foot taken care of and some food in his belly, I think he'll be all right. He'll be all right. Will he understand that? He's lost her for certain this time. She's no longer a fawn. He's no longer a little boy. But he's ready to go home. Becky! What is it, Dan? Looks like we've got company. You don't suppose Rosebud came back and ate their corn again, do you? Oh, I don't think so, Israel. I think Rosebud's gone for good. Morning, Pastor. Good morning. 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 Why don't you come in and join us? I'll put the kettle on for tea. Oh, I'm afraid we don't have time. We just wanted to... <laughs> don't look at me. This was your idea. Well... I want to apologize for what I said the last time I was here. That isn't necessary. You had every right to be upset. And to tell Israel that I'm sorry his pet is gone. I know I'm responsible for that. No, ma'am. I always knew I had to let her go someday. Possibly that's a part of growing up. It's sometimes a very lonesome part. So, uh, if you get too lonely... Is it for me? It's all yours if you want them. If I want them... I can keep him, can I, Ma? He won't need no pin or anything once I tame him. And I bet you one thing, he won't run off like that rosebud did. Please say I can keep him, Ma. Of course you can. Gee, thank you. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Polly, she's the one who found him. Oh, you just take good care of him and don't let him get lonesome. That's thanks enough. If he ever gets lonesome, all he has to do is snuggle up to Pa's hat. <laughs> I think I'll go feed him now so he knows he belongs to me uh, Oh, uh, Israel, one more thing uh, Would you bring him to church? Uh, I might need some more help with my sermon Sunday Yes, sir <laughs>